Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This one going over the five game NBA slate for tonight on DraftKings. And we got two pretty solid games on this slate, so I'm mostly looking to attack those, but we'll get into that. But before we continue, if you guys could leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPanel16. And if you're interested, especially it's about every single night for the NBA season in my projections, my Discord chat, and all that good stuff, links in the description below for my Patreon. And without further ado, I say we get right into the slate. But first off, I want to talk about last night's slate because that was one of the worst slates of all time. So uh, I had one of my worst nights ever. Uh, Andre Drummond, he had 28 points. Bradley Beal, I think, had 22. Both of those guys flopped. Those are my favorite spend-ups. Drummond, he only had three minutes in the second quarter, and then he did absolutely nothing. Then the Pistons were winning by like 40 or like 30 by one point. So he did nothing. Bradley Beal left the game, I believe, with an injury. And then... Uh, Marvin Bagley, he the guy I liked in the late games, he got hurt. He left the game. He scored 24 points at least, but he still left the game. De'Aaron Fox got 6.5 points in the first minute and 58 seconds. He gets hurt. He never comes back. And then Shabazz Napier, I don't know if you guys um, were following uh, Fantasy Labs for that, but um, he was, you know, he had an illness, so he was questioning what to play. So they said he was going to play, and they said he was starting. And then they said he wasn't starting. And then a minute after lock, they said he was starting. So I'm sure a lot of people pivoted off of him, and I'm sure that did not go well because he actually had a pretty solid game. But nonetheless, it was a very, very gross NBA slate last night. I'll show you guys the lineup I had. I only scored, I believe, pretty sure it was the worst night I've ever had. I only scored 180 points. So, yeah, I had uh, Peyton, uh, Gildas Alexander. Sorry, it's like backwards. Uh, Prince, Bagley, Drummond, Fox, um, Bojan, and then Napier. And the winning lineup in my contest only had 287, and uh, 282, and that's usually 282 doesn't even get you in the cash in the cash lineup. And this was the winning lineup in my GPP. Like, sorry, it's all backwards, but you know, I had Lillard, Beal. I mean, even cash with Beal, uh, Basley, Rudy Gay, Rashawn Holmes, Donovan Mitchell, and that guy, and then Buddy Heald. So. It was a pretty gross night all around, especially if you can cash or, uh, win a tournament with Bradley Beal. So, whew, pretty ugly slate last night. I'm hoping tonight goes a lot better because last night was absolutely disgusting. I got to refocus my camera, so one second. All right, I'll focus now. So, but yeah, last night was just horrendous. So, hopefully we get some better luck tonight, even if the injuries didn't happen. It was still probably a pretty bad night because of Beal and Drummond. But let's get into today's slate. So, we have Giannis here up top at 11,300, and I'm pretty much viewing him as a lock. I'm going to do whatever I can to fit him in my lineups because I think he's by far the best play. And, it's like, and on small slates, I want the best play. I'll figure out the value plays, but give me the best play on the slate. I mean, the guy's just a freak. He's averaging 1.9 points per minute, and the person in Second on this slate is averaging 1.55 points per minute, which is not is not bad. But Giannis is on a whole other level from the entire league. Uh, Embiid's at 1.55. That's the guy in second. Also has a 38 point uh, like 8 percent usage rate, and the Bucks have a 125 team total, which is by far the highest on the slate. This game also features an insanely high 238 point over under. So points are going to be scored in this game, and this game is also going to be a track meet. Milwaukee is first in pace of play, while Atlanta is third, so you got to love the game environment here. It's going to be very back and forth. A lot of points are going to be scored. Now, the only issue here is it could potentially be a blowout. The Bucks are 12-point favorites, and it could be one of those games where Giannis only plays like 25 minutes. We've seen it before. When the Bucks blow people out, Giannis is not going to get 30-plus minutes. We saw it versus New York on December 21st. He only had 26 minutes. The cool thing is, though, he's so good on a point-per-minute basis, he, still gets, he can still get you 60 fantasy points in 25 minutes. No one else can really do that in the NBA. So I like Giannis here either way, and it's just an elite matchup. Atlanta's uh, dead last on defense just in general, and they're 29th versus power forward. So... Giannis is going to eat here. I don't see how he doesn't get you 60 points, if, even if it's not a blow, even if it's a blowout. So I'm going to be locking him in no matter what. Hopefully he does not pull a Drummond, but Giannis does not typically pull a Drummond. Uh, Giannis' bad games are when he scores like 50 fantasy points. So I'm going to do my best to lock him in. Then Trey Young would be a GPP pivot if you're not playing Giannis, or if you can fit both. I did not. I have not built lineups yet. I don't build lineups to like six because I build one lineup, and there's no point in building lineups when news comes out so late in the day. But if you could fit both, then that'd be cool. But if you're only picking one and you want to just get a little get a little weird and fade Giannis for some reason, you could go with Trey Young. And if you're fading Giannis, I think you got to play Trey Young because these two have the highest ceilings by far. And he's going to be lower owned just considering Giannis is right above him. I'm not sure how easy it will be to fit both in. But, uh, you know, if we want Giannis to hit his ceiling, so say you're playing both and you're 
you know, Giannis needs to hit a ceiling and play a full allotment of minutes. Trey Young's probably going to have to have a pretty big game here and just start, you know, nailing threes and nailing all of his shots. So it's actually a pretty good correlation play to play both because then if, you know, if the game's close, they're both going to hit their ceilings here. And he can certainly have huge games. I mean, 63 points in the last game, 67, 50, 61. He's had 60 points in three of his last four games. So he's been very, very good. And his price came down a little bit from the last game, so I do like that. And he's got a 34% usage rate this season, and he's averaging 1.4 points per minute, which is also very good. And Milwaukee does actually struggle versus point guards. They're a pretty good defensive team, but they struggle versus two positions, and that is point guards and centers. So try one of Trey Young's positions, so... I think he should have a pretty good game here versus Milwaukee. We've got a high total. This game's going to be a track meet. A lot of points are going to be scored. So I do like Trey Young as a GBP pivot off of Giannis. But honestly, I'd rather play Giannis in just all formats because he's not that much more expensive. But just giving you guys options. So Yeah, the two best plays on the slate are pretty good plays. <laughs> Jill and Bede, I'm going to pass because just, I just want to play one of these two guys. I can't see myself playing on Bede. Uh, let's see. Simmons, no... Butler, no thank you. Vucevic, not versus Embiid. So John Collins, 7,600. So just staying in this game, it's a small slate, so I'm looking to attack one of the best game environments, so that's what I'm going to do. And that's going to continue here with John Collins. He had his first game back from from suspension, where he had uh, 50, point, 50 fantasy points, 27 real life points, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 10 boards, and a good matchup versus Cleveland. Now, matchup's a little tougher now as we're going against he's going to see a lot of Giannis in his matchup and that's never ideal because he's a good defender but the game environment is what gets me here and he's been solid this season he's averaging about 1.2 points per minute so you know if it's a competitive game he's going to get 35 plus minutes I think he can get you 40 plus fantasy points and it's 7600 with a slate that there's not a lot of good options I don't mind John Collins here at 7600 I think he's a solid play and then Devontae Graham, I'm probably going to pass on. I mean, just GPP play only. You know, the guy's got a high ceiling. But just give me D'Angelo Russell here at 7,400, a little bit cheaper. And so he really disappointed on Christmas. It looked like he was going to have a pretty good game. But he had a nice start. But then he fizzled out as Damian Lee stole the show. Because, you know, of course, Damian Lee, of course Damian Lee stole the show, right? That's just how fantasy goes sometimes. But still, his price is pretty nice. And I'm interested. Uh, this game, uh, has this, this is the second best game of the slate, in my opinion, with a 223 point, with a 223 total, with a... Pretty tight spread as well. I believe it's like six points. And honestly, it might be the best game of the slate because not everyone's super expensive. On the Bucks game, yeah, you're looking at a couple good guys, but it's mostly like Trey Young, John Collins, Giannis, and that they're very expensive. In this game, there's a lot of good mid-range to value plays, so that's why I'm really liking this game. So it might be the best game of the night. It's also at 10.30, so it's a late-night hammer. And I do expect this game to be pretty chalky as well. So if you're doing really good in early, like early on in the slate, I'd be a little worried because there's going to be a lot of plays coming, coming at you at this 10.30 game. But this game should be played pretty fast. Phoenix is 8th in pace of play, so a bit of a pace up spot here for the Warriors. I believe they're like 13th or 15th. And they also struggle with guards. They rank 22nd versus point guards, and they're pretty bad versus shooting guards as well. I don't remember the top off the top of my head, but still pretty bad either way. And they have a th- and Gian- uh, Russell has a 32% usage rate and about 1.3 points per minute. So <laughs> D'Lo, I think he's a pretty solid play. I think he gets you 40-plus points. And 7,400, I'll take that all day. Good game environment as well. Uh, Chris Paul just absolutely broke the slate last night. I liked him, but I didn't think he was going to get 54 fantasy points. That was insane. Six rebounds, 11 assists, three steals, 23 points. He's okay, but I don't have a ton of interest versus Charlotte tonight. I'd rather play D'Lo, and I'd rather play, honestly, I'd rather play Ricky Rubio, to be honest. It's just a good matchup versus Golden State. They suck versus guards, and he's been pretty good this season. He flirts with triple doubles almost every single night. He doesn't really get triple doubles, but he actually did versus uh, Portland on December 16th, but... He's been pretty good. I mean, 43, 41, 21 is a little rough, but only played 24 minutes in that game, so you can't really expect a ceiling game. And 49, 53, 35, 44. I mean, he's fine. It's a good matchup versus Golden State. If you want to just game stack this game up and play Ricky Rubio, I have no problems at all with that. He's you know, a solid player. He should get you 40-plus points. So I don't hate Ricky Rubio. Uh, Chris Middleton, I like him quite a bit. And it's not just because he had a monster game last week, uh, last night. Uh, he had eight, not last night, on Christmas, eight boards, four assists, one steal, 31 real life points, had 51 fantasy points. He actually outscored Giannis, and he's had some good games this season. In 24 minutes, he had 44 points versus New York, and I think he's a pretty good play on the slate. He's actually grading out as one of the best plays on my sheet, and it's just because it's such a good matchup. Atlanta is dead last versus small forwards. They suck versus shooting guards. They suck versus power forwards. They suck versus everything. They're the worst defense, uh, defensive team in the league. This game's going to be a track meet, 125 point implied team total i think chris middleton can have another 40 point outing and he's only 7k so i think he's a pretty solid play on this slate and again i'm just playing guys from the two games i like i'm pretty much avoiding the okc charlotte game i'm pretty much avoiding the philly orlando game and the miami Indi- and indianapolis game so 
just or Indiana game. <laughs> I keep calling them Indianapolis. That's just because I'm thinking of football. But um, yeah, I'm pretty much just looking to attack this Atlanta Milwaukee game and the Golden State Phoenix game. And I'll just get all my players from there. Just give them the best game environments and. It's just my kind of like my strategy for DFS for NBA. Uh, Devin Booker at 6,900. So he's just entirely too cheap. I expect him to be pretty popular tonight because there's no really reason. There's no real reason he should really be this cheap. And I'm not really even one to play Devin Booker. I actually don't like playing Devin Booker. But, you know, this is by far the cheapest he's been all season. If you just look at his recent salary, 79, 83, 84, 88, 6,900. That's just an extreme value for someone with a high ceiling like him. So I think I'm going to take the bait here and buy low. And this is a very solid game for fantasy. Like I said, there's a bunch of value in mid-range plays here, and no one really breaks the bank. And they all have upside too. So I think this is going to be a great game for fantasy purposes, and I do expect it to be high-owned, like I just said earlier a little bit ago. But Booker is very up or down. I do think we can get him on a good game versus Golden State because the matchup fits a nice, you know, just kind of spells out a good Devin Booker game this matchup does because there's not going to be a whole lot of defense going on and Golden State sucks versus guards and pretty tight spread highest total about 223 total and then again it's a pretty should be a pretty fast paced game and they rank 24th versus shooting guards and he's got a 27% usage rate now the problem is he's only averaging 1.12 points per minute but that's when he's like 8,800 I'm not paying for someone that's only averaging 1.12 points per minute at 6,900 yeah I'll give it a pass there and I think he's definitely a solid play so I do expect Devin Booker to be highly owned tonight, and I will more than likely be a part of that. Let's see, scrolling down. Brogdon's cheap, but it's, it's, it's a sucky matchup versus Miami. Let's see. You know, Draymond Green, if you're just looking to game stack this game up, he had a really good game on Christmas. 20 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and a block. I don't think he's going to get 41 points again, but I think he can get you 30-plus points. So 6,300 is not a bad play for just game stacking this up. I like him in fast-paced games. Could rack up some steals and you know rebounds and whatnot so don't mind Draymond Green don't mind Kelly Oubre either at 6300 if you're just game stacking this up now just like Booker he's pretty up and down but this should be a good game here so I could see this being an up game where he's you know flirting with 30 plus points he's got a 22 percent usage rate in the season just below point per minute he's gonna get big minutes so he's probable for the game as well so I wouldn't worry about that but I think he gets you 30 plus points in this game versus Golden State shouldn't be a lot of defense going on uh, Steven Adams at 6,200. I like him quite a bit, and I don't think you have to spend up for center tonight because there's just a lot of, there's some pretty good cheap centers, which we'll talk about, but Steven Adams, he's been flashing some upside recently. I mean, 35 points, 51, 26 isn't great, but then 33, 24, 40, 35, 41, 22, 51, so he's capable of these big games here, and this is an excellent matchup versus Charlotte. They rank 29th versus centers, and they just suck down low. He's only averaging 28 points per minute, but he's pretty good point per minute wise, 1.12 points per minute. And if he's playing well, he'll see some extra minutes too. So, don't mind Steven Adams. I do think he's a pretty solid play on tonight's slate. There's not, I'm not really spending up for center, so I'm liking some mid range and cheap centers tonight, which I'll talk about another one who's one of my favorite plays on the slate in a little bit. So Alec, Alec Burks, he actually um. He took a minutes hit in the last game. He was really chalked too. Only had uh, what twenty four minutes, and he's playing in the thirties. So he pretty much busted his chalk. Twenty two isn't terrible, but not the game you're expecting for. Only scored eight points in that game. So I'm not. I really don't see myself going with Alec Burks tonight. Uh, Damian Lee. I'm not point chasing here. That's all you'd be doing because he is not replicating that game. He got fifteen rebounds. That's not going to happen. He was a good play on Christmas. I'm like, I wouldn't say he was a good play because he. I, we didn't think he was going to get 15 boards and 22 points. But if you played him, you were definitely happy. But he's not going to replicate that. If he has 54 points again, I guess I'll eat my words. But I can pretty much guarantee this is not going to happen again. If it does, oh well. But I'm not going to point chase Damian Lee at 6K. Let's see. Especially with Glenn Robinson being back. Let's see, scrolling down the list here. Not a lot I'm liking. You could just pick some of these Milwaukee guys like Brick Lopez or DiVincenzo if you just want exposure to this game I'd have no problem with that Atlanta is just so bad defensively but Aaron Baines I'm liking Aaron Baines a lot he's actually grading out as one of the best point per dollar plays on my sheet and I expect him to be popular I mean he's 4,800 and you know Aiton's still out so so Baines should still see about 30 minutes he had 26 minutes 32 minutes 30 minutes the past three games and he's actually pretty good point per minute wise. He's averaging 1.07 points per minute. And I like this game for fantasy purposes quite a bit. Now, he's not been great recently, only 17, 22, 21 points. But this is a good matchup. And, you know, I think right now it's just a very strong point per dollar play. And I want exposure to this game. And he's pretty cheap. So, again, cheap center. So I don't mind plugging him in. Don't think you have to break the bank at center tonight. And then we could also look at Willie Cauley Stein, who's actually, again, one of my favorite players on this slate. 
Again, you do not have to spend all the way up for center tonight. I don't mind going with Aiton and Willie Colley Stein in the same game. I think that's just an excellent pairing. And you save some salary for Giannis, Chris Middleton, Booker, D'Lo, guys like that. And yeah, I like Willie Colley Stein. I liked him on Christmas quite a bit. Had a good game, uh, 26 points. The four blocks helped. But um, the minutes have actually been pretty strong for Willie Colley Stein. He's not a big minutes guy, but the past three games 28 minutes, 30 minutes, 31. So I do like the uptake in minutes that he's seen. And he's racking up the blocks as well 4 3 3. And I'll take blocks all day because they're worth two points apiece. And this is a good matchup versus a fast paced Phoenix team. And they rank 23rd versus centers. And he's been a point per minute this season. So if he's going to give out 30 minutes. I think he can get you 30 plus points in a good matchup. So, really, Colley Stein, definitely a solid play on this slate. Pretty sure I'm going to lock him in at this, at, just at this moment because I do think he's a very solid play. And then, if you need, this is the cheapest I'd go as of right now. Hopefully, some more value opens up. But, you know, Nerland's Noel, well. he comes in at 3,900. Now, he's not going to get big minutes ever. He's going to get about 20 minutes. That's pretty much what he's going to get. But he's actually been pretty good this season on a point per minute basis. 1.07 points per minute. If you're going to give me 20 minutes versus Charlotte, who's the second worst team versus centers, I think you can get you 20 plus points at 3,900 and it could open up some salary relief. So I don't think you have to spend top dollar for center tonight. I'm looking to spend up at other positions. As you see, I like Willie Colley Stein. I like Aaron Baines. I like Nerlens Newell. And I like Steven Adams. So these are all pretty cheap centers. So you should be able to afford Giannis no problem tonight. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter, ChrisPanel16. Check out the extra content if you want on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video.